Hello, 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 YouTube, Facebook. Uh, hope y'all can hear me. I want, I'm coming before you on the topic of getting rid of or disputing debt collect, collector's debt. Debt collector's debt, in my opinion, is even, even bigger than getting collections removed off of your credit report. Right. Uh, let me know if you can hear me. You all are tuning in. Show some digital love. If you're watching this upload on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Uh, my subscriptions have went up about a thousand people within the last month on YouTube. So thanks for that. And just want to explain, thank you for the Digital Love Facebook. Make sure you hit like, and you hit share. Facebook, share this on your timeline. And so, let me change my level so I can breathe better. But, um, a topic that's not commonly discussed is knowing what to do when you get a letter from the debt collector in the mail, right? I made a video yesterday explaining that just because you get accounts deleted uh, from reporting on your credit report does not mean you still do not owe the creditor or the account holder who reported it on there. What that means is there were some inaccuracies reporting on the account and legally you were able to get it deleted, right? Right, so, uh, okay, I just received the email. And let me take a break for a minute to uh, explain this process. When you sign up with a collection agency, and I'm gonna get back on the topic of why getting rid of debt collector debt is um, should be more highly sought after than just getting the collection removed from your credit report. So I stay on top. So you know that getting that collection removed from your credit report can increase your credit score by 25, 100 points. And no one likes living with bad credit. No one likes living paycheck to paycheck, right? Um, but once you have the knowledge of how to write and respond to that debt collector, once you receive a letter in the mail and they have to explain that you have the right, right, to respond back and request validation, not cease and desist, but validation in 30 days what validation does is it totally clears you of the debt if it was illegally purchased illegally purchased me if they did not have all the documents in place required legally to collect that debt from you and what a lot of people, I don't think they think about is, okay, if they were legally in position or if they automatically had legal rights to collect from me, right, why would they have to take me to court to receive the payment? You know what I'm saying? Have you ever thought about that? Why? would they have to take you to court to receive the payments when it comes to your mortgage or your vehicle? They just repossess the property, right? Because you've entered into an agreement by signing your name on documentation of agreement to repay. So why is the only jurisdiction that a debt collector can have is 
when you ignore the notice. And so I don't know about you, but as for me, I would rather, well, for me, I would, I would have the best of both worlds because, you know, I know how to make them validate the debt and I know how to get it removed from or deleted from my credit report. But if I had to choose between the lesser of the two evils, I would prefer to position myself within that 30 day time frame to legally save myself thousands of dollars by disputing the debt collector. Right? I mean, that's just me. But I know how to do it both ways. And so I want to just come before you again because I think a lot of people is misinformed and they think that once you get something deleted from your credit report, that it also prohibits a debt collector or student loan from collecting for you. And it's not, it's not true. You can't go to court with a copy of your credit report and suggest that um, it's not showing on my credit report, and so I don't owe. Thank you, Carla. All right, so I'm sweating and I'm running out of breath. So let me make this topic, or let me make this closing. Um, just know there are three three ways you can go about my heart rate is at 164 doesn't look like it but it is it's three ways you can go about improving your credit right you can number one do it yourself uh, not against that I just know a lot of do-it-yourself products or cookie cutter and no one's credit is a cookie cutter situation meaning that no one uh, with the different social securities have the same issues on their credit report and so that's like a hit or miss that do-it-yourself product may address your situation you know it may it may not Number two, you can um, go through a credit business, credit repair business. Some advantages of that is you can pay month to month, lower fees, right? Um, you may not have it out up front. You pay maybe $99 a month, $150 a month. The downside of it, is they usually stretch that out and it takes more time. And number two, they will not show you how to increase cash flow right from your job, out of your paycheck, if you have accounts with high balances that need to be paid down to increase your score. And number three, which will be true of a lot of do-it-yourself products, and a credit repair business. Uh, they will not delete your addresses, which addresses are inaccurate names reporting, which not only can improve your credit score by two points or more per name and per address deleted, it also helps to uh, get negative items connected to those addresses deleted at a quicker rate and it also makes your credit profile looks more appealing makes it look prettier right to lenders once they pull your credit report and they see that hey this person has one address they've had a credit profile for 30 years uh, they look dependable and stable we should lend to them you know so just know when you sign up with a credit business, you may, I got some sweat or something. It may require you to be a little less hands-on. 
Meaning that with me, you have to get documents notarized. You have to send me emails and updates and screenshots and proof of what was done in your favor that you wanted done and what was not done in your favor. So if you are a person who can, number one, not go online and pull your credit report and email it to me, or you cannot scan and email me the correspondence from the three major credit agencies. And you're a person who think that you don't have to be involved in your credit repair process. Uh, I believe that a month to month business that may drag out your credit would be the best situation for you because you may not have to be as hands on. You may not get those quicker results, but with me, that's the qualifications that have to be met. Because if I'm consulting you and you don't scan and email me what the agencies wrote you back in return that was either in your favor or not in your favor, then I don't know how to help you compose a correspondent um, answer, right? To reply and respond to that. You picking up the phone, calling me, trying to explain what the letter is saying, that won't work. Because to be honest with you, 90% of people don't even know how to read their credit report. They definitely don't know how to read and explain what they received in the mail from the credit agencies. So if you can't do that, if you can't send payments electronically uh, to get started, then we can't, we won't do business together. So I'm saying this and then I'm closing. Just know by law, any credit business, when I mean business, that's a month to month payment plan that will probably address one to two issues per month. They have three days after your payment has been submitted before they even start on your credit report. I was stating that I just received an email from a client who paid Saturday evening, right? Um, I sent her an email today stating that Experian has been contacted concerning this account. Their question to me was, what about Equifax and TransUnion? Just know, you sign up with a month to month plan, credit agencies, they won't even start. Start on your credit until three business days. Because by law, you have three business days to request a refund. And they want to make sure they're out of that three day window. Right? They don't want to start doing work for you. And the third day, you say, hey, I want a refund. So I just want you to know your options. I'm well aware of the options out there. And that's why I understand when people have bad credit, they are in stress, they're in the risk. But at the end of the day of expressing your emotions, you're gonna have to come down and do business. Um, I told one client today, a former client, um, that the time you are spending calling me on the phone and sending me text messages, that same energy and time could have been applied to you sending me the email from the credit agencies, from the letters that you receive, so I can know how to correspond on your behalf if you didn't get the results that you wanted to receive. All right, so my heart rate's dropped 10 points. I'm signing off. Hey, just know it's better well, it's best to get out of debt collector's debt. Save yourself hundreds of thousands of dollars if you know how to do that. 
and I'm not speaking of C's and the C's. And then, after you do the best method, it's better to get it deleted out for your credit report, right? So if you have letters from debt collectors um, coming to you in the mail, your first line of defense for consultation will be to reach out to me concerning disputing that debt collector on your behalf before you're concerned about getting it removed from a credit report. Hey, I'm signing off. You all make it a great day. Queen of credit and cash flow and debt collectors.